All right. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of NBA live stream of consciousness, rocking with you on a Saturday, a lot of stuff to get to. So let's go ahead and get into it. Thank you for watching. If you've watched the Ben Simmons, uh, why he is not Draymond Green video, got a lot of love, a lot of support, a lot of new subscribers for that. So I appreciate that. I did uh, get a lot of comments uh, of unkind nature, you know, just saying a lot of mean spirited things about you know, the, the, the video is obviously wrong now because of one regular season game. Can we, can we be serious, please? Like, I know they won one regular season game and James Harden did not play well in one regular season game, but it's one game. Can we be serious, please? You know, this is a place of serious discussion, serious debate. This is a place where knowledge is gained, you know? I'm not here for the, you know, whatever. You guys can get that whatever at a different place. You know, look, look. It wasn't the greatest game by James Harden, obviously. Uh, Kyrie and Kevin Durant came out hot. Uh, Kyrie, he's been playing some, you know, crazy ball lately. Uh, just hitting his shots. Chauncey Billups said earlier this year he might be the most talented offensive point guard that's ever played in the game. And, uh, you know, it's hard to doubt it. Hard to deny it. Uh, maybe Penny, uh, just because of Penny's size. I might say Penny might have been a better offensive player than him, but I mean, the package, he just, he has everything. Yeah. Um, I would say probably other than Penny, I, I, I don't remember a guy who, you, when he's making his shots, which he's often is, he's a 50% shooter, 40% three-point shooter, 90% from free throw line. He just has every, every move. And, um, you know, the Sixers didn't really have any answer for it. I think more concerning was the play of James Harden, but he missed a lot of open shots. You know, he was taking the shots. He missed just a lot of open shots off the thing. And I think there was just a game where the intensity of the game, there was so much vitriol and energy for a guy who did not play, you know? So it's like, it's different when the crowd has so much energy and the other team has so much energy, but the guy that they have the energy against is actually on the court and he's dribbling the ball. Every time he touches it, you boo. I think, I don't know. It was just, if the game, the, the energy in the building was kind of weird. And I don't know if that was it or, you know, Harden just had a bad game, but he started off the game one of 12. Um, you know, I, I have to be fair here and we have to see how this goes in the, the postseason because obviously I still think that the Sixers and Daryl Morey should be indicted on federal charges of fraud, tax evasion, and money laundering in this trade to trade someone who does not play for an MVP. Uh, but the criticisms of Harden as a postseason player are valid. There are valid criticisms of him not showing up in some of the bigger games. That being said, uh, he has had some great playoff moments against some great playoff teams. Uh, you counter that with Ben Simmons never having a moment. Uh, never. And you could say, well, oh, Ben Simmons is early in his career. Early in his career, James Harden had one of the finest four-game stretches in the league um, in, in recent memory versus the Spurs for them to win that series. He gets them to the finals. Now, he had a bad finals. So you could say, hey, you know, this might portend to, you know, days of future past with James Harden, this is just how he plays uh, in big games. But I would say, one, this is the first time in a long time that he is not the number one option on his team, that there can be stretches where he can slide to third, which is kind of the reason why Brooklyn got together in the first place. And I would say, two, it's a regular season game, and he has had some success in the postseason. It's not like he curls up into a ball versus Atlanta, um, the Atlanta Hawks players, teams of that caliber. Usually these struggles that he quote unquote is having is against the Warriors, is against the Spurs. You know, that's the team, the, the Miami Heat. It's the apex, it's the apotheosis of competition that he struggles at. It's not the Yang 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 second round scared to dunk uh, versus the Atlanta Hawks series. So no, I don't think them losing proves me wrong or right or whatever. I mean, I still think there's a lot of ball to be played, so we'll see. Um, I did 
uh, want to, I, I think I'm going to drop something on Draymond Green because, the, the, you know, the Warriors are struggling. They're, they won their last two games, but a lot of people are, you know, just surprised at the way that they've played without Draymond. And I'm not because, you know, he's such a big cog of what they're doing. Uh, another story, LeBron, 50 points last night versus the Wizards. Uh, no player of his age has ever had back-to-back home games of 50 points. Um, it's just, it's a testament to, you know, what he puts into his body, the way he takes care of his body. You know, it, it came out that he was spending over a million dollars a year on his body, and I'm sure he's keeping that up. You know, he just, you know, a lot of people, I am a Lakers homer. I am from LA, but as an analyst, I just think that if they get, AD back and none back. AD, obviously someone who has superstar talent and none someone who's been a borderline all-star uh, at, at stretches in his career. Uh, you mentioned that with THT, with Avery Badley, with Stanley Johnson, with Malik Monk. And that might be something with the West being as volatile as it is, might be something that they could ride to the finals. Um, are you really going to count LeBron out in a seven game series if him and AD are healthy? Like, is that really, do, do, are, are you really like for what team? For the Nuggets? For, for, for who? So, if those two guys, you know, a lot, of, a lot of talk has been made about LeBron's stint with the Lakers. And I think the truth of the matter is, his stint with the Lakers has been defined by injury. The first season they didn't make the playoffs, he got hurt. The second season in the bubble, they won. Last year, he got hurt and AD got hurt. So you can't really judge his Lakers career because injuries have defined it more than anything. So if they get AD back and he's healthy and he's rolling and none comes back and he's healthy and he's rolling, I still like their chances. I think their odds are still really, 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 really tasty. And I'm going to put something on that before uh, the playoffs start here in earnest. Uh, other stories to talk about in the league. Uh, you know, I see. I think there's been a, a late push for Jokic to win the MVP. And I'm definitely going to do a video on that because I just don't see how that could be the case. Um, you know, part of the issue is... I think with NBA media is obviously there's favoritism there and Jokic is a favorite of theirs because of his story, his mild minor nature, uh, you know, his body, you know, he was a pudgy kid. You see uh, pictures of him. He looks like Augustus Gloop and he's changed And obviously the VORP slurps and all these analytical ratings, I guess, love, you know, the season that he's had. But just in my personal opinion, from what they've told me, what matters to them before, uh, quality of play, quality of competition, defense, there's no way it's not Embiid. Uh, but uh, I'll break it down in a video. Um, uh, as far as NBA, you know, obviously we're just getting to the stretch run here. Unfortunately, you know, uh, the NBA All-Star team of Charles Barkley and Ernie Johnson, Shaq, and Kenny, they're going to be focused on uh, March Madness. So this is always an interesting time of the year where you have this basketball tournament that has nothing to do with the NBA, but then it's nut-cutting time in the NBA. So, for example, the Heat have 14 games left. Uh, the Sixers have 17 games left. So, you know, it's not like, um, you know, there's so much, you know, runway of the season that you can bring your focus to this. And by the time you bring your focus back, then NBA is damn near playoff time. So obviously the West uh, is a mess. Uh, injuries, Chris Paul, Draymond, um, Murray, and Michael Porter Jr., Kawhi and Paul George, it, it, it sounds like there's an opportunity for Kawhi and Paul George to come back, um, which I think the Lakers, uh, I mean, they'll be fine because right now they're in the ninth seed. So 
the Clippers in Toronto, if they if if the Clippers play Toronto with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, you, you have to take them in that series. So that that might mean Minnesota might not make the playoffs here. Uh, which is scary hours for them. So they had a bad loss last night to Orlando. So they gotta ride the ship. They gotta try to get to the sixth seed and avoid the play in. They they really have to fight to get to the sixth seed. Um, the Pelicans were making some noise, and then CJ McCollum got um, on the COVID list, and then Ingram uh, got hurt. So uh, yeah, this this stretch of basketball towards the end, and then always with Brooklyn Nets, is Kyrie even gonna be able to play? Um, the seven eight matchup versus Toronto because Toronto is not allowing any unvaccinated players to play. And then if he has to play in New York, can he play that game? So, you know what I'm talking about, we spent the top of the show talking about the brilliance of Kyrie, but is he going to be able to play or not? So when the hell is Ben Simmons going to play? I wouldn't be surprised if he had put some icy hot on his back and he plays the next game. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. He's traveling with the team. Generally, you only travel with the team unless you're uh, expecting to play sooner than later. So, yeah, when the NBA is getting down to the stretch run here, um, uh, I'm not really a college basketball fan, but it's nice to watch uh, the prospects that are coming in. Uh, Salute to Pop. Uh, He is the NBA's winningest coach of all time. Salute to him, Pat Don Nelson. Uh, great coach. Obviously, the you know this conversation I think begins and ends with Tim Duncan. Uh, Tim Duncan staying on the team. Tim Duncan getting drafted number one to pair with David Robinson. I think that you know this can be you know his mild mannered nature, his ability to step coaching allowed Pop to continue on. You know, coaches like uh, you know Phil Jackson have had public pushback from their stars. And the only one that really pushed back against Pop was uh, Kawhi Leonard. And that was a weird situation where it was more about the injuries than actual coaching style. So so salute to Pop. Uh, you know, it, it, it's great that he is the uh, winningest coach of all time. And, you know, obviously his tree um, is vast in the NBA. And, um and starting to go into the creep into the WNBA as well. So shout out to him. All right, let's go ahead and end it there. The NBA live stream of consciousness, games the game. Go. On. So what's up, man? What's up with you otherwise, you know? Uh the game is a game. Always. <laughs>